This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by American Helix. The American Helix is a revolutionary new concept in smoking technology. Designed and manufactured by American glassblowers, this pipe is light years ahead of its time. Based on Bernoulli's principle, the shape of the pipe, along with an innovative intake system, creates a venturi effect through precision micro holes in the chamber, which results in a slower burn that conserves tobacco and gives a smooth, refreshing experience, making the American Helix the smoothest hitting pipe on the market. For further info or to locate their products, you can find them online at AmericanHelix.com. That's AmericanHelix.com. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by Mountain Glass Arts. For the month of August 2016, Mountain Glass is offering their Chinese color and clear rod and tubing. At 40% off, just put in the code CHINESE, that is C-H-I-N-E-S-E, at checkout. And for all you soft glass nerds, they're having their Effetre sale, 30% off rods, COE104 sale. Just put in the code Effetre, that's E-F-F-E-T-R-E, in checkout, and you'll receive 30% off. Any questions, comments, or concerns, just go to mountainglass.com. That's mountainglass.com. This is the Wise Guy Radio Show a podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard, whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast, we have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 119. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. With 17 years of experience behind the torch, I am as excited as always to bring you conversations with artists, sharing their stories in hopes to inspire and entertain while helping you grow your business. And today is no exception. Today's topic of conversation is waste versus scrap. And this has been a topic I've been pondering over and doing lots and lots of research, trying to find the best ways to talk about and describe this stuff uh, without it being too boring and mundane, but also to get the point across uh, to make some sense. Uh, this all has been spawned from some contacted emails I've received over the past few months, uh, referring to past episodes where I've talked about uh, saving your scraps and your waste and uh, weighing that shit out every week so that way you can save it and use it for a tax write-off and a deduction. Now, there's two different ways of looking at this. There's the scrap, and then you have your waste. And there's definitions that are used in the terms of uh, manufacturing and also in accounting um, that basically differentiates the two. And if you think about it, uh, scrap is something that can be reused, made into something else, and then resold, where waste is just waste. And going through the process of the research, I looked up websites and researched and researched and researched and really couldn't find anything out there uh, pertaining to our industry, much less the art world. But I did find some uh, conversations and some topical stuff that was referring to uh, the restaurant industry and also woodworking. Because uh, like the woodworking industry, they, you know, they'll use a eight foot two by four for a project that only needed seven feet and they'll have a foot of waste left over. That's actually considered scrap because they can then take that foot they had left over and use it for something else. Or they can also sell it. Or if they have their sawdust and that kind of shit, they can also sell that stuff off. Uh, we're like in the restaurant industry, uh, you know, we, if you have food, you have waste. A lot of times people that eat uh, don't eat everything on their plate. They don't always take it home and then you have waste. Uh, also in the cooking and, and pr uh, the processing uh process to be, to be redundant here um there's also waste when they're you know when you're doing in cooking so basically what i tried to do is tie tie our industry tie the glass world uh, into this conversation with uh, other mediums other areas of business and trying to find ways that we can actually make this make sense because there is ways that we can go about saving our raw materials and scraps and stuff and using that for a tax write-off. Now, we can only use a certain percentage, uh, every, you know, throughout business, there's certain percentages that we have that we're allotted to um, in terms of allocating your tax deferments and what have you at the end of the year. And uh, this is just one of the areas, but it's also something to think about, um, I guess, in a sense, more or less to help you increase your profits. Um, so 
before I go any further with this topic of conversation, I just want to remind you that uh, this see right now it is August seventh that I'm recording this. This is coming out this see it's Sunday right now. Coming out tomorrow Monday as the show is going to be released. Uh, you guys have you you, you now have uh, eight days left. A week from today is the deadline for getting your contact information into me uh, to basically sign up for our uh, Wise Guy Radio Secret Santa pennant trade. Uh, we've gotten a great response so far. Uh, the wife and I will be compiling all of everybody's information, matching you up with another artist, and then we'll be sending you their information to send your pendant off to. Um, we're going to set deadlines as well as for when you need to have this pendant done and sent out. Um, I'm going to hold everybody that is listening to this, uh, including you, who I'm talking to directly, accountable for getting your glass out there. Because uh, I don't want this to turn into a big old snafu bunch of bullshit where people are pissed off that they mailed glass out and didn't receive anything in return. And uh, I know myself years and years and years ago uh, during the, the glasspipes.org and the, the, the days of the forum before the, the melting pot started, uh, we did a secret Santa trade. And uh, I didn't receive my, my trade piece until it was almost, I want to say it was like three months or four months after the fact. Uh, but come to find out, I was uh, chosen or my name was given to uh, Nate Dizzle. So when I received his piece in the mail... Uh, I was blown away by it. And it was actually, uh, it was during a time where we had hurricane, it was during hurricane season, and we had three hurricanes uh, come across our state of Florida here. Uh, we were out of power for 10 days, the whole nine yards. It was just a crazy, crazy week. And lo and behold, um, I received this amazing, beautiful item in the mail from Nate. And uh, something that I cherished and still have and held on to and love and will cherish forever and ever and ever. But uh, that being said, uh, this is something fun that I uh, definitely don't want anybody left in the dark and wondering where the hell their glass is. So I just created a page actually on the website. So you can go to wiseguymedia forward slash secret Santa. And I'll have the link in the show notes as well. Uh, so all you got to do is just go to wiseguymedia forward slash secret Santa. It'll bring you to a page where you can just fill in uh, your email information into the sign up form that's on there. And then you'll receive another email back asking you to then send in all your information uh, in terms of your name and shipping information. Now, you can also, if you are uh, just want to bypass that part of it, which I would prefer you go to the site because I'm trying to get everybody to go onto the site and actually use it since I am putting a lot of work <laughs> and time into this thing. Um, but basically, if you can also just send me an email, info at wiseguyradio.com, info at wyzguyradio.com. Uh, you can also send me a message on the Facebook page, the Wise Guy Radio Facebook page. Uh, just go on there to uh, facebook.com forward slash Wise Guy Radio, and then you just send me a direct message on there. Uh, also posted on Instagram yesterday, too, for people to send me messages on Instagram. And because it's all over the place, I would really prefer to have it all sent through email. Um, I know those of you out there listening to this that are international, um, I don't know how it all works with the internet and radio and all that stuff works. Um, so I'm not sure if you're able to email me or not, or even get a hold of the Facebook page. Um, I'm going to try and find a way, uh, another outlet or some way to get a hold of everybody out there. Uh, because the other day I did the count and I thought it was around 36 countries that we have listening to us right now. And we actually have 54 countries uh, around the world. 50, 54 countries. It's absolutely un unbelievable. I said last time I was going to do a screen capture, and I want to do a screen capture, but the only problem is is that the shading that they use on this Libsyn thing to show what countries they use or that are actually listening to the show is very, very faint. So what I'm going to do is print it out and then color it in and then take a snapshot and, and then post that onto the page for you all to see. So it's pretty exciting to, to know that we have this huge international audience listening to us, artists of all kinds of glass and fans of it as well that are tuning in. So thank you, everybody listening to this, to you in your ears right now listening to this. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. So uh, I'm not going to ramble on about that anymore. Uh, let's see what else is going on. There's a bunch of shit going on. But you know what? I'm going to tell you about it on episode 120 because I don't want to hold you up anymore because this is a bunch of dry business talk we're getting into. Um, you know, it's kind of impossible to make exciting. But that being said, I'm still going to go over the topics that we're going to be covering here. So 
Before we go any further, uh, don't forget to go to wiseguymedia.com and subscribe to our newsletter if you have not yet done that. Uh, you can also go make sure you go to iTunes if you have a Droid or whatever you use to listen to the phone. Or not a Droid, but iPhone, I should say. And subscribe to iTunes if you have a Droid. There's lots of different podcast catcher apps out there. If you have a Droid, you can download Stitcher for your uh, phone to listen to it. And then you can also go to wiseguymedia.com, go to podcast archives, and you can find the show. Uh, this show will be wiseguymedia.com forward slash 119. And then uh, all the other shows are on there. I've got about 90%, I believe, of the episodes up now on the website. And uh, just going to be going through one by one and creating all the pages for everybody to make sure they're all pretty and their pictures are up and bios and all that fun stuff. So it's going to be a work in progress. But that being said, the episodes are still up and ready to play. So you all can go there and click on the links and just listen to them as you go. And other than that, I think it's time for us to get into our conversation about waste versus scrap and how we can go about writing this stuff on our taxes. And with that being said, I am not a professional accountant. I have referred to my accountant for some of this information, as well as internet research and what have you. Uh, I recommend that you do get an accountant if you don't have one that you can talk about this kind of information with, uh, these kind of questions as well. And my accountant is still, she's so busy, it's crazy. I mean, I'm happy for her that she's busy, but she hasn't had time to come on the show yet. And uh, I'm gonna try and pull her aside here in the next couple of weeks and bring her on so we can talk about this stuff further. So other than that, we will talk to you all soon, and I will see you in a minute as we get into our discussion about waste versus scrap. Time for us to get into our conversation, talking about waste versus scrap, calculating waste of manufacturing. And I'm going to try to simplify this and not make it uh, you know, mundane and boring as much as possible, and also to have this make some sense. And I'm going to start off by using a reference uh, to the restaurant industry as an example of uh, how you can take two different perspectives on, on waste that you have in your studio. Uh, one is basically to take the calculation of what your waste is, add it back into what it costs you to manufacture, which will increase uh, the dollar amount of what it costs you to manufacture your items, or just save that number, leave it separate, and then use that number as a deduction on your taxes. Uh, kind of two different ways of going about this. But what we're going to do is first, again, is talk about the restaurant industry. And to use the food industry for an example, they have plenty of waste associated with manufacturing of meals. For example, if broccoli is on the menu, then a bulk order of broccoli is needed. Say each head of broccoli weighs one pound and comes in a 10 pound box that costs $20. This would mean the cost of each unit of broccoli is $2. Now when the broccoli is being processed to cook, a portion of the broccoli is removed and would be considered waste. Let's use 50% uh, let's, let's use 50 as how much of the broccoli is removed, which would mean 50% is left. This would bring the true cost of each unit to $4 per head of broccoli, since technically we just removed 50% of the weight, but it still costs us $20 total. So this 10 pound box has just now been reduced to a five pound box, but still costs us $20, which means that each unit of broccoli now costs $4. Now in the restaurant industry, one of the things they try to do the most is how can they cut out the waste uh, to increase their profits, uh, in terms of how much each meal is actually costing them to manufacture. Now, when you take it into the world of art, especially when you're manufacturing glass on a production scale, uh, this is important to think about too, because we can, we can go two ways. We can either A, take the waste that we've had per item, add it back into that item, which then increases the cost of it and decreases the profit, or you can take this total number of waste, say per week, keep track of it, and at the end of each month, keep track of that number, add it up, and then you get a percentage of that number deducted for your taxes as a write-off for waste. So the same idea again. So we have a pipe, right? And I know we're not all of us glass artists out there make pipes, but I'm just using this for an example. Same concept when it comes to calculating cost of goods manufactured. And so for example, you have a three-inch wrap and rake spoon 
that weighs two pounds. Now I know it's kind of heavy, but it weighs two pounds. And this is all just for example. And costs 50 cents to make in direct costs and an additional indirect cost of 50 cents. Now direct cost means what it actually costs to manufacture the raw materials that it took. Your indirect cost is overhead, like your rent, the electricity to keep the, the power on in the place, all that stuff, your phone bill, everything it takes to run your business. All these numbers have to be taken into consideration when it comes to figuring out how much it costs to manufacture. And in the previous episodes, I had talked about calculating your baseline cost of what it is to manufacture on an hourly basis. You can really figure this out and get down to the details and the nitty gritty of it. But to get it to more into where we're at now, we're talking about calculating waste. And I'm sure you can hear the background. The wife and the dogs are playing. So I apologize for any background noise. Just try and focus on my Okay, enough of the creepy whispering. So again, for an example, we have a two pound, three inch wrap and rig spoon that costs us 50 cents to make in, in, in the direct costs and then 50 cents in indirect costs. So total manufacturing cost is a dollar to make this pipe. After the item is made, you're left with a little bit of waste. And for the sake of an example, we're gonna call the waste a half a pound of material. When we estimate our baseline cost for each item, we figured that the three inch wrap and rig spoon weighs two pounds and costs a dollar to make. So again, we have a, a, a two pound pipe, it costs us two bucks. Each pound costs a dollar basically. So now we have a half a pound of waste, it costs us 25 cents in waste. Now, if you work for a week and you manufacture 100 three inch wrap and rig spoons, you're gonna have an estimated amount of waste of 25 bucks. And you multiply that by 12 months and you'll see that there's an approximate waste cost of $300 annually. So that's one way of doing it. That's just calculating how much waste you have and just keeping track of it. So that way every quarter you can just write down, okay, this quarter I had 20 pounds of waste. The other way to go about this then is just to add it back into the cost of manufacture. So basically what you would do is you would increase the direct cost, which is the raw material to manufacture each item by adding the waste back into the piece. And since we figured that the waste cost us 25 cents and the actual item when complete weighs 1.5 pounds, you then add that back into the, the 25 cents back into the cost of manufacture of the item, which means that the 1.5 pounds of material actually costs you a dollar, which we said initially the two pound pipe costs a dollar to manufacture. Well, now you have a pound and a half pipe that costs a dollar to manufacture. So when it comes down to it, what you really want to do is find how you can minimize the amount of waste that you have. And uh, whether it's a fully made piece that cracks and breaks, if you can fix it and sell it as a second, you can still sell it and get the, your money out of it, basically. Uh, or if it's just garbage, then keep it, and then you can weigh that out. Because, again, that type of stuff is your end of the production process waste. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how much really else to get into it without really talking your head off and boring you with this talk. But I just really wanted just to talk about this, just to get your brain moving and thinking about ways that you can cut back on scrap and materials and, and making a, a mess and waste and really figuring out the uh, cost to manufacture your items. So again, either A, you add it back into the cost of the piece or just keep track of how much waste you have, which to me, it seems more uh, simplified answer is just to keep track of your waste. So what I do is I have a metal little pot that I used uh, with all my shit in there at the end of the week and I weigh it out when it's empty and dry and then I will weigh it at the end of the week without water in it and just the glass and then just subtract the numbers and that's how much glass I have and then I have a ratio again I do like 70% clear 30% color have some numbers calculated based for those and then I can determine an estimation of how much each week I have cost and waste and then when it comes down to accounting uh, we're again we're only allotted at a certain percentage of that number as a tax write-off so you either do that way or you just increase the number of what it costs for you to manufacture your pipe. So it's just different ways of going about it. All right. So other than that, I hope that helps you guys out and some thinking about some stuff. Uh, again, I got some of these references from accountingcoach.com. Uh, there's lots of websites out there, some good YouTube videos on it and just the things to think about. Until next time, happy Melton. Hope you guys enjoy this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode 119. And coming up on episode 120, we have Mike Luna. I dig his work. Hope you guys do too. I'm sure you do. And we had a great conversation, and I hope you guys will enjoy. So until then, happy Melton. We'll talk to you. Have a safe time. Love you. Peace. This segment of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by Zen Dude Fitness. Lose 10 pounds this month by joining the Zen Dude Fitness 4-Week Jump Rope Fat Loss Challenge. Brandon and Dan will take you on a guided journey towards becoming the best you. 
Get fit, have fun, and find new ways to eat healthy while still enjoying the sweeter side of life. Just takes 20 to 30 minutes a day and no gym required. For more info and to sign up for the free four-week challenge, go to wiseguymedia.com forward slash zen dude fitness. That's wiseguymedia.com forward slash zen dude fitness. 